Hello, everyone. Um, here are the study questions for the letter of James um, from the New Testament of mine. <clears throat> Reading 19. Number one, provide an interpretation of the following passages. These are all very open ended questions, by the way. Uh, be doers of the word and not hearers only. Uh, this, uh, I think, obviously connects up with question three. Very famous, most famous part of, you know, Second, maybe most famous thing said in the letter of James that faith without works is dead. This notion of be doers of the word and not hearers only. The, the, this letter is oftentimes, I think, contrasted with the letter of uh, Paul to the Romans where he says faith, I don't know if it's Romans or Corinthians, or, uh, but St. Paul says it, that faith alone justifies you. Faith alone is uh, <clears throat> sufficient to achieve salvation, whereas James pretty much says, I think, the opposite. That not the opposite, but that you have to you have to act on on your faith or your beliefs. You can't just have the the, the belief of faith. It's a very big theological controversy, I suppose, in, in Christianity. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deluding yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his own face in the mirror. He sees himself, then goes off and promptly forgets what he looked like. But the one who peers into the perfect law of freedom and perseveres and is not a hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, such a one shall be blessed in what he does. So, I mean, I suppose it's about living the thing, uh, living your beliefs rather than just sort of carrying beliefs around and forgetting about them when you actually live your life live your life shaped by your beliefs, I suppose. Number two, James tells us to be unstained by the world. What do you think he means? Well, I mean, obviously it's a matter of interpretation. It reminds me of the Bhagavad Gita. The way that Krishna tells, you know, Arjuna, you, you got to fight, you got to live in this world for as long as you're here. <clears throat> but don't be of this world. Don't be attached to this world. You have to be unattached to things to a certain extent because you have to concentrate on what's really important, which is not the worldly things around you. It's certainly not wealth or uh, material things or winning the battle that really matters. It's, well, it's enlightenment. And I suppose the Christian person would probably say the same thing. They might not call it enlightenment. They might call it salvation or something like that. But I, I don't think it's all that different. So I, I take it to mean don't be unstained by the world. Like any religion that, that promises some sort of afterlife and certainly any religion that you know, thinks that you know what's real is not what's in front of your face sort of like you know the religion that krishna describes in the bhagavad gita would say don't be unstained by the world don't be don't be too attached to the world maybe don't be attached at all i don't know number three james says faith of itself if it does not have works is dead what do you think this means i, I don't know except that it's um I think the reason I said it's not the most famous thing, because I think somewhere in James, he says money is the root of all evil. So it's pretty, pretty famous. Um, <clears throat> but to say that faith without works is dead, pretty um, important position within the meaning of Christianity. I mean, you know, that uh, it's not just about having faith in God or faith in Jesus, whatever the Christian religion ultimately says you have to do in terms of your belief. It's about living a certain type of life, and um, you know, if, you, if you're not doing that, then you're not doing it right, I suppose.